Hello, happy Tuesday. Welcome back to another episode of The Practice. This show is an unrehearsed recording of my workflow, mostly in Cinema 4D and other digital art applications. My name's Stuart. I'm a 3D artist, illustrator, designer, and your pal. And I'm excited and fired up and eternally grateful that you guys are back for another week and are here to at least watch, if not participate, in creating some awesome digital art. So this week, we are going with a fairly simple scene, um, and we're going to be making this, this great little aquarium, this little goldfish bowl. Um, I was inspired because I actually got a goldfish recently. I've, I've uh, always loved keeping aquariums, and I haven't had one in years, so I've got this awesome little goldfish tank, and it's sitting on my desk here with me, and it's really inspired this week's practice. So as you can see, what we're doing is we're starting out with a couple of very simple lathe nerves. And what you can do with a lathe nerve is you can take a spline and add it to the nerve. And what it'll do is it'll rotate that spline 360 degrees and uh, create a shape. And it's super, super useful for creating things like jars or wine glasses or cups or anything that has a circular shape. So what we've done here is we've taken one sort of spline to create the profile of the larger bowl, the, the, the big vessel here. And then what I've done is I, I took that spline and I duplicated it and made it a little bit smaller and added it to another nerve and then cut off the top of that spline so we'd have sort of a, a water's edge towards the top. And then I did the same thing uh, along the bottom and use that to create a little bit of like sand or gravel towards the bottom of the bowl. So you can see we've already got a lot of the fishbowl done here with just a couple of splines and a couple of nerves. And so now what we're doing is we're gonna add some plants. So I added a really simple uh, sweep nerve with a spline to make the, the little stems. Now what we're doing is we're using a bezier nerve create some really simple leaf shapes, throw those in a cloner set to radial to get a little ring of those leaves, and then we throw the cloner in a cloner and duplicate that along the spline to get what we're seeing here now. So I'm going through and adjusting the count and setting the distribution to even, getting those arranged nicely. Also added a little bit of a taper to the, the stem spline by going into the details tab and sort of dragging down one end of that curve. And that also what I did was to, to match the taper of that stem, I've added a, a step effector to the cloned cloner, the leaves, and so that they get gradually smaller as they move along the stem. A step effector is really a powerful tool use that a lot in conjunction with cloners to do a whole series of, of effects. Um, and while this is a fairly simple scene in a lot of ways, you'll see that it is, because we're dealing with transparency here, it's, it gets a bit heavy and render times get a bit nuts. So what I'm doing initially is instead of going full transparency and getting those really beautiful glossy effects, I'm just using a simple alpha channel. And um, I'm going to set up most of the scene with an alpha channel instead of the full transparency just because it renders a lot quicker. And so I'm going to set up my composition and make sure all of my elements are working nicely and the model is, is set. And then I'm going to go in and add some, some true transparency. And we'll use a Fresnel and some, some other effects to, to make it look kind of realistic and nice. So what we've done here is we've used, with this plant, we've used another, uh, another Bezier nerve to make a simple leaf shape. And we've cloned that in a circle, a radial cloner. We made a really rather simple plant. What I'm doing here in the interest of time is just grabbing a, a background from an old file. You may, may recognize that horror movie villain from a previous episode. And I wanted this to have a really sort of quiet, tranquil feel. So I'm using these these kind of light pastel colors, and I'm not going to have a ton of contrast in my color palette here. I'm really going to be sticking to, gosh, I almost want to say like 50 or 60% dark and, and up, right? So mostly we're going to have some very quiet, simple kind of colors. I want, this, I want this to feel 
very calming and serene and tranquil. I'm adding some rocks here. I think we've done this in previous episodes, but if you haven't caught any of them, one way I like to make really simple but kind of nice rocks is to just take a simple shape like a cube and add it to the Varanoi fracture and expand that. And that's going to give you all these really angular chunks that work super well as rocks, in my opinion. What's an aquarium without a few little decorative rocks here? So getting there, getting there for sure. Adding, adding some lighting, a little spotlight. Some shadows going on here. Making the whole thing a lot more transparent. And see what I did here to sort of fake the appearance of depth or of thickness in the walls of this glass vessel is just to move the water and sand inwards from it. So you can see on the edges of this aquarium, it looks as if the glass has thickness. Now, that's a great way to save some time because if you were to have a, a vessel with true thickness to the walls, the refractions and transparencies and all that beautiful stuff would get even more time intensive to render, um, which is okay, but is, is something I decided not to do for this piece. Um, and you'll see a little bit later, I, I do run into a, sort of an issue, nothing, nothing major, but you know, there's one area of the vessel that ultimately didn't look as realistic as it could because I didn't add that true thickness to the walls and just sort of faked the effect by placing the water and sand inset from the edges. And here we're back at it with the Bezier Nerbs one more time, making some blades of grass, throwing those in a cloner, but using a grid array this time and a little bit of a random effector. Just spacing that out, giving it a little bit of variation. Nothing nicer than a well-planted tank. Any other aquarium nuts, holler at me in the comments and uh, let me know if you like keeping in fish. Which we will, we will get to the fish shortly here too. So we've got the tank mostly set up for this guy. And I was feeling that it was a little bit squat and not quite as elegant looking as it could be. So you can see there, I sort of adjusted the proportions of the pot, moved it upwards, gave us a taller, thinner, more elegant feel, which I think ultimately worked in our favor. Now we're just adjusting elements, fine tuning their placement, getting the composition looking right. If you wanna look at beautifully composed fish tanks, look up a guy named Amano, A-M-A-N-O. He's a, a Japanese aquarium uh, expert master, I'd say, whose, whose stuff is just incredible. They look like mini landscapes. It's, it's just unbelievably beautiful and inspiring, in my opinion. What I've done is I've actually gone into some of the material presets here and used a, uh, I think it was the sandstone material for the sand here. Um, I should do a whole episode on this, but man, if you go to the, um, if you go to the create, materials tabs and look under the presets, there is just a gang of really excellent uh, starter materials for you to use. Some of them are good to go just as is, and some of them are going to get you, you know, 75, 85% of the way there. You just might need to tweak some colors and some parameters, but uh, a really excellent resource. And a really good way to, to sort of reverse engineer how some materials are made. You get to see sort of the layering of channels that are used, and uh, it's really beautiful stuff. Very useful starting point. Um, so you can see here now we're, we're going into those materials and we're, we've taken off the alpha channel and we've added in sort of true transparency. And what I like to do with, the, with that is add a very light Fresnel to the transparency layer. And that gives us a realistic effect in that the edges of the glass will appear slightly thicker, slightly more trans, uh, no, opaque, slightly more opaque. Um, which, which gives us a realistic effect. That sort of adds some fall off to the visibility of that transparency. And now I'd added some blue to the water and that was feeling just a little bit too blue. Water, it truly isn't that blue. In fact, most water is perfectly clear, but adding just a little bit of cool blue uh, makes it feel more like water. And um, I think what was happening here was that 
it was feeling too blue because my sky object had some blue in it as well. And I also added a little bit of blue to the dark end of my ambient occlusion. And so I think we were getting some blue pushed into that, that water texture. So I've gone through and just adjusted some of the stuff here and made that a bit lighter. And it's looking good. So now on to the goldfish. And this isn't the first time I've made a goldfish on the practice. Some of you may have remembered an episode, oh man, must have been 20 or 30 episodes ago. But uh, we used Sculptress to make a goldfish. This time we're going to use Cinema 4D's native sculpting tools and uh, really push and pull some of this stuff and, and get a nice little fishy body. I'm not going to spend a ton of time sculpting, just going to add a few little details, keep this guy rather simple. Um, but we can add a nice little mouth, some indentation for the eyes, and just get the overall body shape feeling like a nice chubby little goldfish. I've been really enjoying playing with these sculpting tools in, in recent weeks. Um, this, it's really just an unbelievably powerful tool. I know, you know, it's not as, it's not as robust as, you know, your ZBrushes of the world, but um, for someone who doesn't know how to use ZBrush, uh, it's really, it sort of bridges that gap in a beautiful way. And as someone who uses primitives mostly to do their 3D modeling, it's nice to be able to go in and alter some of those things and have more organic forms and really just keep adding, adding you know, tools to the toolkit, continuing to, to grow our skill set and learn new things. And man, there's just an endless number of buttons in Cinema 4D to press. So it's fun to press some ones that we, we don't always. I mean, you can see here we're, we're, we're making some fins now. We're leaning back into those, uh, those uh, Bezier nerves, which is a great way to, to you know, get some, some simple organic shapes going. So we're using symmetry as well to make these fins, beautiful flowing goldfish fins. Of course, since the top shape is so similar to the bottom shape, I just duplicated it and made some adjustments. No sense in totally modeling from scratch what you've already got mostly modeled. The other thing I've done with these fins is added the added the bezier nerves to a cloth nerb, and that adds a little bit of thickness to it, which uh, makes it realistic and also makes it non-destructive in a way that simply uh, extruding wouldn't. So, so yeah. So now one of the fun parts of, of this goldfish is is texturing, and what I've done is just use some noise that's been scaled way up, some some white and orange noise to get some of that beautiful, you know, white and orange spotting that looks great on goldfish. See these in this in koi a lot, and I'm, I've thrown those into the layer, uh, made a layer uh, texture, and those noises are autom automatically added to that. And what I'm doing is just just layering those on top of each other to get a more realistic sort of goldfish pattern. Add little tiny black dots on top of those overlapping orange splotches and I think we're, we're feeling pretty good. We're getting pretty close. So I'm going to add this goldfish in there, have them sort of swimming towards the top. We're going to get into our last handful of test renderings here. I'm sort of looking outwards, away from the center of the composition, which, which wasn't working for me. So I go ahead and rotate them here, adjust the colors a little bit. And then because of where he was sitting and the way he was overlapping the plants, I, I wasn't totally sold on that effect. So I wind up rotating him and adjusting some of the plants just so everything sits together really nicely. Even though it's sped up a lot, there's, uh, there's 
you know, increasingly expensive renderings to create, especially since I added another light. And what I do here is I go through and I add some subsurface scattering to the lighting channel of the goldfish. Because as you know, like a, like a goldfish's fins wouldn't be completely opaque. The light would pass through them and uh, gives it a much more realistic effect when, when that happens. I've also, you know, we may have blown right past it in the time-lapse nature of this video, but I also added a little bit of subsurface scattering to the leaves of the plants because they were feeling a bit, a bit plasticky. And, and, you know, realistic plants have, you know, slight opacity to them. The light will penetrate the surface just a little bit. So all of that combines for fairly resource-intensive renderings. Thank goodness we've got a uh, time lapse at full effect here, right? And we're getting really, really close, but something wasn't wasn't feeling right about the way the composition had come together. So I kept tweaking here, and I ultimately wound up moving some of the plants over. all those all the wireframes visible it was tough to see really until I rendered so I, I switched the view setting which gave me a better view of the overall piece and you can see once we get through this rendering that I mean, it's going to feel a lot better with that placement tweaked and look here's our whole progress love going back and looking through all the different renderings at the uh, at the progression of the piece as I was saying, here we go with the with the plants and vines moved over slightly and that fish repositioned ever so slightly. Feeling a lot better. The one final thing I think I need to do before outputting the final rendering is to throw anti-aliasing on. The last super resource intensive bit of all this is that when you're dealing with uh, transparency, especially a few layers of transparency like we've got here, the the aliasing can get a bit rough. You can really see the stair steps and the the nasty aliasing there. So we had to throw throw the, the settings a bit higher on our anti-aliasing. And that's going to give us a much cleaner, smoother rendering overall. Here we go, final rendering time. This has been double fast forwarded so you don't have to sit through it for too long. I do wish my machine would crank through frames this quickly. You see here the, the quality settings are feeling a lot better. Got some nice glassy refraction. Things are coming together so we'll pop on into Photoshop for a bit of retouching. And as I mentioned earlier, the, the one issue here, I think, with not building out the thickness in, this, in this, uh, this vessel, this aquarium here, is that towards the top, the, the aquarium was, was looking sort of flat. So now we faked the depth with the sand and the water against the edges of the glass. But here across the top, where we were truly only one panel thick, it did, it did feel a little bit flat. So I just went in simply in Photoshop and, and added a bit of lightness and did some shading by hand across the top. It's not a perfect effect, but I think it, it got us closer to where we needed to be in the end and ultimately would have saved us a lot of time in terms of rendering. So sometimes when you're making a piece, you have to sort of, you know, go through your pros and cons and figure out what exactly is going to lead to the, to the final best result. And here we have it. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to drop one in the comments below. If you want to keep up with me and the work that I'm doing, please check me out on Instagram at DLGNCE. And until next week, this is Stuart saying goodbye. Thanks.